we've been looking at mature choices. And in fact, so far, we've been looking at maturity, about how important it is that we must mature. We spoke about what it means to mature. It means to be complete in natural growth or development. In other words, to bring to full development. And we did look at a few scriptures that tells us that it is important that God had placed it in us that we mature. And I started, I was privileged to use one of my favorite um, verses or chapters. People said, I always say this one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite. In Luke 2, 52, it talks about how the boy Jesus grew. And I was saying that even Jesus had to mature, to grow. So God has set it in place that we mature. And the reason why we're going to be, to, we're talking about mature choices and God willing next week, hopefully, or the week after we'll start looking at the choices. But we're just looking at the fact that it is important that we do mature. Today is the 10 of Hebrews chapter 5. I'll be reading from 11 to 14. There are a few things that I've bolded in my scripture that we'll look at. And of course, I'll probably give you some definition and then we're going to pray into the word. Hebrews 5:11. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Now, the book of Hebrews, we don't know who wrote it, but we thank God for the person who wrote it. Very, very amazing book. I want to encourage you, if you are able to read through that book, it talks about the blood, the reconciliation, what, the sacrifice. The, I like that, the final ultimate sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats could not make it. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. So when, if we, from verse 11, it says, we have much to say about this. It tells you that you have to read the preceding uh, chapters. Because of teaching purposes, we're not going to go back there. But he says this, and these are the words that I've boldened. One of them is hard. The other one is you no longer try to understand. And then it says you ought to be teachers, and then we'll continue with the rest. It says, we have much more to say. But he uses the, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. This is the person speaking, whether we don't know who it is, like I've said already. But he's saying that we, we have a lot more. I mean, you, in other words, we are limited. A lot of times God speaks to us, and on Wednesday I was saying that God speaks all the time. He speaks all the time. And on Wednesday I was using one way of describing, an adjective to describe God, that he's a chatterbox. So it's good to be a chatterbox. I mean, if you love to talk, just keep talking. Just make sure that you talk sense. <laughs> because our God does. I mean, he, he talks all the time. And so he always wants to communicate with us. Remember what happened at the beginning in the Garden of Eden. He creates Adam and Eve. Why? So that he can have fellowship with us. So that he can communicate with us. So that's God's ultimate. And so the writer is saying that we have a lot to say to you, but it's hard. Why is it hard? Sometimes it's hard for God to communicate. What? But he's God. And he explains why. He says, because you no longer try to understand. In other words, if we are mature, we will always try to understand God. Immaturity means that we don't want to. When it says that you no longer try to understand, it means that the people have made up their mind that they are not going to understand it. It is a bit like me. I am not very good with figures. Some of you probably figured it out. And so as a result of that, because I'm not good at figures, I've told myself I've just come to that status quo that I'm not good at figures. If that's the case then, when I read something or somebody's telling me something and as soon as the figures come, it's like I just shut up shop. So I wait and I will ask Elder Jerry, how much is this plus plus that? I won't even try, attempt to, to calculate it because I feel I'm not good at it. Do you understand where I'm going? So in other words, if you're immature, that's how you relate to God. You make up your mind that what God is going to tell you, you're not interested. You're not going to understand it. It's going to be double Greek. It's out of your level. It's beyond your reach. And so as a result of that, it becomes hard for God to communicate to you. It is very important that we do understand <laughs> that God's idea is to speak to us and we ought to mature. 
What does it mean to understand? To understand means to perceive the meaning of. You perceive something. Pastor always tells us about, you know, sometimes when he's naming children, he would say that you, you have common sense and stuff like that. He said that before some, you know, so he would say that sometimes people, when they're talking, it takes them a long time. Say, oh, that's what you mean. The person doesn't have the gift of perception. So to be able to work and say, no, this, I think this and this is what's going to happen. So you, know, you have the ability to perceive, grasp the idea of something. And it also means to be thoroughly familiar with. Okay, so that's what, what it means to understand. It also means to grasp the significance, implication, or importance of something. When we are mature, it's very important. God wants us to be mature. And one of the reasons he wants us to be mature is so that we can understand him. When we mature, we become just like him. Oh, hallelujah. Remember today, we, 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 uh, when we started, I was talking about how by the blood and we are joint heirs with Christ. If we're joint heirs with Christ, we are just like him. Look at what Jesus tells us when he's going. He said, greater works will you do. Look at that. He's saying that he makes us just a little lower than him, Elohim God. It means that he makes us just like him. And so what God can do, what Jesus came to do, we can do the same. Wow. And in some places, he even says, that for you are gods with a small g. What does that mean? Does that mean that we, other people should worship us? No. It just means that we're exactly like our father. Just like any good child is exactly like their father. We are made in his image and likeness. Image means we look like him. And likeness means we have the same characteristics. Okay? It's like a child. Yeah, and some of you may have heard me say, when I was younger, when I was a girl, I looked exactly like my father. So sometimes I would go somewhere, kind of, as the kids would say, random, and somebody would say, oh, are you like Boafu's daughter? Why? Because I was made in his image. Some of you are like that. You know, I'm not going to mention names, but sometimes you see somebody like Adab. Now, if you see her, if you see her, you see her mother. If you know her mom, you see her, say, oh, wow. Not to mention names, but I said I won't mention names, but Cynthia, she's at the door. Cynthia has a sister. And I remember once I went to Ghana, her sister came there. And any FCI person that came, we were walking and say, oh, are you Cynthia's sister? Are you Cynthia? Why? Because they've got the same image. So you, as soon as you know Cynthia, you know that person. And that's how we are in God. So when we walk around and the devil sees us, they have to see that yeah, this one is a child of God. Amen. And if we're in his image, we're also in his likeness. And if we're in his likeness, we have to understand him. So we have to, in maturity, we have to say, so that when God wants to speak to us, we can understand. And we're going to pray, and God, give me an ability. But the word here says, you no longer try to understand. What we need is desire. Master, speak, for your servant is listening. That is the level we ought to be at. Acknowledging the same Hebrew says, Who are God, who are sundry times, spoke in diverse ways through the prophets. In other words, we should understand if we're going to be mature, and as mature people, we must know and acknowledge that God speaks all the time. But He speaks in different ways. And that we need to then position ourselves so that when God speaks, we will understand Him. We will connect with Him. Because otherwise, we can't mature. He says, that's why he continues. He says, in fact, verse 12, though by this time you ought to be teachers. You ought to be teachers tells you and I that there's a process. And we've already said that. That God has placed it in us, just like he's done in the physical, year in and day in and day out. Some of us are very good at checking ourselves in the mirror to see have I got an extra, <laughs> an extra wrinkle, an extra gray hair. Some of us are very particular about plucking things out and you know, coloring things and stuff like that. Well, you know, it, it, no matter what happens, it, it catches up with you. No matter what happens, you will grow, whether you like it or not. I mean, there was some story about, I've forgotten what it was, something about she, I don't re remember where I, uh, this woman that discovered eternal youth or something like that. They write all these stories about it. But you know what? There isn't such a thing. No matter what, you will age. In the spirit realm as well, God has placed it in us that no matter what, we should age. But the thing 
about that is that we ought to position ourselves. It's not going to come naturally. In other words, you're not going to just sit there and it's going to drop out and then all of a sudden you understand all kinds of mysteries. Look at Paul, he writes, and I know a man, and this man was uh, translated into the spirit. He understood all kinds of mysteries and stuff and he had encounters and stuff like that. He was talking about himself and of course he had trained himself and that's what the scripture said. He had put himself in that position. It's my desire that I will get mature. And so will you and I. We're coming to the end of the year. It's time for us to take stock. Where did we come from? Pastor taught us one of his teachings many years ago. He spoke to us about the assignment a long time ago. Please visit the bookshop. And he was looking, Jonah, uh, looking at Jonah. And he said something like this. That every man ought to know where he's come from. Where he is. And where he's going to go. Where he's going, what plan does he have? In the same way, remember, he spoke to us about the spirit. If we carry the spirit of God, we have that same ability, to the same way we draw the past into the present and into the future. We need to take stock so that we can mature. You ought to be teachers. And so God does not expect us to stay at the same level. When he talks about you ought to be teachers, I think automatically what might come into your mind will be teacher as in me carrying, uh, what do you call it? The microphone, oh, but I'm not a pastor, so he's not talking to me. No. Remember, the world is our parish. The workplace is your parish. Your house is your parish. We're all in ministry together. And so what God is telling you and I, and there's a scripture that says that we ought to be instant in season. We have to know any time to speak a word in season. Any time there's a, there's a question, we must have an answer for it. In other words, as we mature, we ought to be teachers. We can talk to somebody, our neighbor, the one on the bus, somebody who has an issue. We will be able to teach them the word of God. We ought to be teachers. You want to ask yourself, who is in your life that you can teach? Do you have an ability to teach? In other words, do you have an ability to speak the word of God? What you've learned. It might just simply be what you studied today. What you, what you um, learned at church. We ought to go out there. Let's remember that ultimately we carry the work of an evangelist. That's what we ought to do. We ought to, te to be teachers. But he says, you need, rather us. Instead of you teaching rather. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God all over again. It's almost like we keep going backwards and backwards. And we're going to place an injunction in the name of Jesus. That you and I, we will not go backwards. We place an injunction. We place an injunction for our children, our children's children in Freedom Center International. We will not regress. We're coming against that spirit because it's the spirit of the enemy. And when you regress, you get to the point where you don't do anything anymore and your desire ceases. And then all of a sudden, you have no desire for the things of God. You don't want to come to church. That's why we have a lot of people who fall by the wayside. It will not happen in this house. We're refusing the entry. If we make up our minds, we will not allow it. That spirit must go. We must kill it today and forevermore. Amen. We can't go over it again. You need milk, not solid food. And he tells us, of course, anyone who lives on milk is an infant. And he uses the word acquainted. is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. And that is something that we need to understand, that we ought to be acquainted. And any time we ought to be acquainted, we cannot say, oh, I've been acquainted with this and I've left it and I, I, that's it, I've packed myself. What it means to be acquainted means to have a personal knowledge. Having personal knowledge. But I like this. He says, as a result of study or experience. We ought to acquaint ourselves with the things of God. We can't, if you sat there and read the Bible all the way through and got from Genesis to Revelation, the idea is that you don't close the book and say, well done, Dorothy, you've read the Bible throughout, cover to cover. It's okay now. So the rest of my Christian work, I'm never going to read the Bible again. The only time I'll look in the Bible is when I come to church and then pastor tells me, turn to Revelation 3.16. There's a challenge right there. It will not allow us to mature. Because the thing about it, how many of you have read, sometimes you read the Bible and you think, so hold on, is that in the Bible? Is that in the Bible? Sometimes somebody will say scripture, say, hold on, you go back and you check. The, oh, wow, this, this, is, this is in the Bible. The other day, somebody shared a scripture with me, 
He said, oh, this is what you say all the time. And I looked and I thought, my gosh, I read this book of Ecclesiastes all the way through. But it's in the Bible, I didn't realize. And so we ought to get acquainted with the word of God. Have as a ritual study and experience. It's important, like I said, we try to communicate with God. We try to connect with God so that we can have experiences with God. And the experiences that we have, we acquaint ourselves so that the experiences we have, we can remember, we can connect. We cannot park and say, oh, I've, I've, I've seen visions and dreams. I've had answer to my prayer, so that's enough. That we can get acquainted because it's very, very, very important. To be acquainted means to make more or less familiar, aware, or convince them. On Wednesday, I was talking about it, that we ought to get to a point so much that we will be able to recognize our Father's voice. I prophesy. I prophesy. I prophesy. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this ear, that the ear of the Spirit will be open, that in Jesus' name, let your Spirit pop open right now in the name of Jesus, that you have an ability, even our children, our children's children, nobody, nobody will be exempt because when God wants to speak, he calls the children, he calls the grown-ups. I pray that we'll have an ability to decode and hear the voice of the Lord because we need it. We need it. We need it. And even as I, I was using an example that it's like a child. A child, a baby, in fact, is able to recognize their mother's voice. Even when the mother just, <clears throat> they can pick up that that's my mom. And I pray, I prophesy for Freedom Center International, from our super apostle right down to the youngest child. I prophesy in the kingdom. I prophesy that anybody who has a covenant relationship with God, that we will be able to recognize the voice of the Lord. And a stranger's voice we will not hear. We will be able to know that this is not my father speaking. Just like he spoke in the John. He said that the sheep, they know the shepherd's voice. And they follow the commands that the shepherd, I prophesy. And it takes maturity to be able to hear the word of the Lord, to be able to discern. Sometimes the word of the enemy, they can, you know, some people are very good at imitating people. Some of these, what do they call impersonators? An impersonator can impersonate somebody on the phone. You would believe that it's somebody else. And that's what the devil does. He can impersonate all kinds of people. But if you're mature, you'll be able to tell that this is not my father's voice. No matter how good an impersonator you are. That we might become acquainted. And it's extremely important. We become acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. The way we can become acquainted is basics. There's no other way we need to come to church. We need to involve ourselves in the things of God. That way we become acquainted. It says, but solid food is for the mature. Look, look at this. And you know, I, I like to quote this scripture. But solid food is for the mature. That's you and I. In fact, how many of us know that solid food is better than milk? Uh -huh. Even watch a child that's weaning. Watch, watch. Sometimes, you know, um, um, I mean, I know that I, I'm not going to uh, knock it, but some, we have times that we wean our children, yeah? So sometimes they tell you, when, back in my day, it was four months, you wean your child, then it went to five months. I think it's about six months now, yeah? Help me, professionals. So I think at six months, you wean your child. But watch a child that's been weaned. Before they kind of, you know, get there, they, they usually a little bit unsettled. They get every two minutes, they're crying. As soon as you give a child something, watch. That child just takes that, ooh, I like that. I like that. That child takes it with relish. And after a while, anytime you introduce something, they love it. They, they just take it on. They, they just embrace that. Because they, and sometimes you can literally look at this child and you know, you can read and say, Mother, what have you been doing to me? You mean there's something this good? And, and, and I've been just drinking milk and my belly is just been, you know, singing for me. They relish it. They love that, that food. And that's what solid food is for. It's for the mature. Amen. Because that, your, your adult belly cannot rely on milk. Let me put you all on a milk diet. 
Uh huh. That's a no. Let's put you on a milk diet, or let's put you on a, you know. There are some people that will do diets. I'm not mentioning a new name. The cup fits, and it's liquid. Morning shake. Morning strawberry shake. Afternoon banana shake. Evening strawberry shake. Then the next day. The night and day, day two. Now day two, morning chocolate shake. Afternoon vanilla shake. And then it goes on. Then it's day three. And then they keep going. And <laughs> they keep going. When they get to about day four, say, so, ah, this thing, the Lord is our strength. <laughs> Why? Because even though those nutritionists have told us that it's got this and this in it and that and that and that. I mean, come on now. Your belly is insulting. You're like, what are you doing to me? This is liquid. I need solid food. And before you know it, they're going to the cupboard. <laughs> they start with something. One half banana. Then next minute you know, say, hey! Who are thou before you? <laughs> well, hallelujah. Because that belly is mature. And in the spirit realm, that's what God is requiring for us. That we ought to grow and be mature. So we have to train ourselves to the point that that food will satisfy it. And it says, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Since this journey is a journey. The devil is on the journey. And it's very important that you and I mature. Where we used to be, we should not be there. The level that we're at, we cannot remain there. In fact, we cannot afford. Because like Pastor keeps telling us that, if you're at a particular level, there's some demons that follow you. So, <laughs> you need to be above Oh, hallelujah. You need to be two steps, three steps, four steps. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that that's your, your reality. There will be steps ahead. Steps ahead. Steps ahead. And that takes maturity. It says, who by constant you have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And then we move on to Hebrews 6. It says this, verse 1 to 3. Therefore... And remember, there's five I've taken. So he's moving on from five where he's talking about maturity. As a result, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Please say with me, taken forward to maturity. That is the key. We always must be taken forward to maturity. And that's our desire that we ought to have, that we ought to try to understand. We ought to desire that God, every time I need to be on the move, I need to be moving towards maturity. Then he talks about not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about the cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal ju judgment. And then he goes, and God permitting will not do so. In other words, what he's saying is that the, the people that he was addressing, it was almost like they were regressing, and we've already spoken about it. That sometimes we pack when we regress. And so he's saying that, let's move on. Let's not go back. Somebody wrote a song, I can't go back. I can't go back to the way that things used to be. So they, they, obviously the early um, 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 century church, and they came out of Judaism, we know that. And then they know, you know, remember they have the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they have loads of things that they believe in. And some of them don't believe in the resurrection, some they do, and all of that. And Jesus Christ comes and turns the whole thing upside down. Now they've become believers. So once they've become believers on the way, they are separated from Judaism. But what's happened is that they're still, and Pastor told us, and it's in the scripture, that there's certain people, the Judaism, so they're going around, going, going around and telling people, to go back to those things we have to move on to maturity god delivered us from certain areas we've all had a bc life there's certain things that we now matured in but if we don't go on the journey of maturity what will happen is that we'll start going backwards 
And so well, this is what happened. And so when he talks about, let's move forward to maturity, he said, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death. That means that the things that you used to do, it took you to death. But we're now on a journey to life. But if we become complacent, we go away, we start to go back. So all the things, when we became born again, you know, some of us, we come born again, we throw all our CDs, our Whitney Houston's and stuff like that. So with the, that's what I did. Threw them all away. So, nah, this, nah, nah, nah. And then gradually, gradually. <laughs> that's just an example. But what happens is there's certain things that we cut off and cut off then all of a sudden we're going back to that fellowship we're going back to that conversation we're going back to oh i don't believe in tithes we're going back to oh um pastor is the oh after all we, we, we you know we have to be wise so you know we need to learn how to you know because now we're mature you know those days we were baby christians and so the things of god that that uh, the things that do not help us we go back to it and so we like to think that we're so good, we're macho, you know, these things don't, don't influence me at all. So you can talk anyhow, you know, swear anyhow, gossip, it's okay. But you don't know that your spirit man is taking it all and it takes you backwards. And so he said, let's not go back towards those things again. Whichever your situation is different from mine. He said, those acts lead to death and, and of faith in God. He said, instruction about cleansing rites. So remember, the Jews, and that's why um, um, the Jews do that still. The Muslims got it from there. They have a lot of cleansing rites. You have to wash your hands. You have to pray this way. You have to do that. You, you, uh, you know, if you have a dead body, you have to clean yourself and stuff like that. So he's saying that those things are not important. Those things that are and not associated with your salvation. Don't go back there. Lay, lay none of hands. Don't, oh, do, let's have instructions. Who should lay hands? Who should do this? And stuff like that. The resurrection of the dead. Do we believe in the resurrection? And what's happened is that once they start having discussions like that, they will say, actually, yes, yeah, true. And that's why Paul speaks to the Galatians. Oh, so, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? With your very own eyes, you saw Jesus go. Now, what are you saying? Why? Because they were not moving forward in maturity. Rather, they were opening themselves to these discussions about resurrection and saying, oh, the Sadducees were saying, yeah, there's resurrection. These were saying, no, there's no resurrection. So now, even though they saw it, the conviction that they had, the way they were like, oh my God, that's so amazing. Now, all of a sudden, mm, it's not amazing. Remember the times where you, you hear a testimony, you're just like, wow. Now you hear it, you just like, oh, it's just me. What happened to the wow factor? Where is that? Because we're not moving forward to maturity. And then he goes, us, and God permitting, we will do so. Saints, it's very, very important that we do make sure that we mature. And maturity, the key, you might ask yourself, well, how do I do that? I wrote in my notes, when I looked at all these definitions and stuff like that, this is what I, I came up with. Habit, practice, and familiarity. Familiarity is one of those things that we say, say familiarity breeds contempt, right? But familiarity makes you know somebody. It makes you know that I know that person. I know how they are. I know what they will do. You know, so if somebody knows me well enough, they'll say, oh, if Mama Dora was here, she will say this. Yeah? And sometimes you can even guess it. So, oh, I was waiting for you to say this. Why? Because you're familiar. You know what I'm going to say. She's going to say the word is like the rain and like the snow. She's definitely going to say that. Why? Because you're familiar with the way I approach things. And in moving on to, to what you call it, maturity, we ought to get familiar. Say, my God is going to do this. My God, this situation, I know. Why? Because in the definition, it's by experience. I know, I know that God can do this. I know that my God will not let me down. When we look at Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, why? Because they were familiar with God. They knew that, you know, even though they were a little bit shaky now, said it, even if he did not, but they knew that he can do that. They knew that regardless of the situation, 
it, 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 something can happen. Oh, Paul and Silas, they knew that God can come through. Amen. So I want to encourage you and I that we ought to, as we go on this journey of maturity, we will know what God can do. We will understand his ways. We will know that, oh, no matter what, he says, don't rejoice of me, my enemy. Though I may fall, I know that my God will bring me out of this situation. I'm not going to remain in this situation. That I get familiar with God, that I know that the God who healed me when I had a headache, he can heal me if I have, no matter what the name is. Because I know. Because it takes maturity. And that's why the Bible tells us clearly that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Let's go on this journey. Pastor tells us, he says that on the journey to, to discovery, let's take the journey of discovery. But on this journey, we have to take forward to maturity. We need to move forward to maturity. Those days are those days. Now is the time to move forward. It's a time to grow. It's a time to take stock. It's a time to expand. It's a time for us to know that this God that we serve, he's an amazing God. And he desires for you and I. He says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins will may be as scarlet, I will exchange it and make it white as snow. Why? Because just like, you know, a, a, a child grows. You know, my children are growing to a stage in like that, that sometimes I have a conversation with them, and in my mind I'm saying, is this my child? Why? Because they've matured. The days when I say, get up, go do this, go do this. Now I can have a conversation, sit down, and we can reason together. And why I get blessed, they get blessed from that discourse. And so God is our Father. He yearns for you, you and I. And it takes maturity. Otherwise, we cannot engage with him because he's high up there and he's down there. You do, you look at how you talk to the baby. Ooh, hello. We come up with all manner of things. We're communicating, yeah? But we're, we're not effectively communicating. Watch the child that we, when your child is, is developing language. And you do, 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 da, 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 do, 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 and then you do nod in your head. I remember one of my children, because uh, I'm an expert, I said, yes, yeah, yes, 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 dear, yes, dear, yeah, nod my head. But I could see that this child was incredibly angry with me, because obviously, <laughs> whatever they tried to tell me, I don't understand. I don't understand. So I'm just, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we just do that thing. And when we're immature, that's how it is. Because they, there's a disconnect. We can't understand him. Of course, he understands us, but we're not connected. But he's saying, let's move on to maturity. That's why he says, come, let's reason together. How are you going to reason together if you're not mature? Please rise with me. It should be our desire that will grow. Habit and practice and familiarity that will grow together. It's my prayer. You want to pray for me, pray for me. That I will not, this level that I am at today, I'm not going to stay here. By 31st of December, by 1st of January, I would have grown. I would have taken that journey, walked towards maturity. Those on the internet, we're just about to take a few moments to pray into this. You're saying to yourself, Lord, let's, it says, therefore let us move beyond the elementary teaching about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. It's not backwards but forward. We're not going again to those foundations of repentance. We're not going back there, but we're going forward. We're praying for our church. We're praying for our super apostle. We're praying for the kingdom of God that will not be stagnant in any way. You're praying for yourself. You're praying for your family. You're praying for your children. You're praying for the generations yet unborn that will be taken forward. We take that journey forward to maturity. Wherever you are, lift up your voice in prayer and we want to commit ourselves into God's hands. Thank you Lord. Our mission is raising overcomers, setting the captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness and we hope you've been blessed by today's message. 
worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 277 8700. You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org and remember there is progress in freedom.